The motion of objects in space is governed by the universal law of gravity. So let's consider how this works. We have two objects here, object one and two, and that could be two planets or two asteroids or um, two white dwarfs, black holes, any kind of object you can imagine. And uh, they are mutually attracted by each other due to gravitation. So we have a gravitational force, um, and uh, we label this as F, and this is the force on object one due to the interaction between the bodies one and two. And here we have a force that's, uh, that, that's a force on object two due to the interaction between objects one and two. And uh, the objects are separated by a distance r, one, two. Now, we want to derive the universal law of gravitation, how we're going to go about that. Well, Newton figured out a while ago that it is proportional to the masses of objects one and two. So this one has a mass m2, and this one has m1. And it is also proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects. Now, uh, we need to do one more consideration, to, to, and then we can derive this. We need to actually, um, well, first we need to pick some kind of origin from where we are considering uh, these two objects to be. And uh, this object here goes from the origin to there, and we call this R1. And then we have here R2, which also means that the distance here between object 1 and 2 uh, is R12. And actually, we know from vector decomposition that R12 equals R2 minus R1. So just this. Um, minus this gives us this distance here. Now, um, if we want to write down the universal law of gravitation, we also, you know, there, there's a magnitude component to it, and we also need a direction. And uh, we haven't yet chosen a coordinate system. We could, of course, choose our usual way of placing uh, the i hat direction in the x coordinate, uh, in the x direction, and the j hat coordinate in the y direction. But uh, when we deal with the universal law of gravitation, it's actually better to adopt a slightly different coordinate system. Everything in space usually orbits one another, so it's much better to think in a radial direction rather than just um, uh, normal Cartesian coordinates. And so in this case, we're going to choose an r hat vector, which gives us the radial direction. And we're going to do this here. So this is going to be our r hat direction on object um, two, and here we have an r hat direction uh, two, one. And uh, we're going to come back to, to the r hat uh, unit vectors later. For now, we can just write here quickly down the definition for um, the, a unit vector. Uh, so our r hat one, two is, of course, the vector itself, r one, two divided over the magnitude uh, of the vector. We can write it like this. And uh, now we can, we can write down the, the, the gravitational law. So the force on object, we're going to look at object two. Uh, the force be on object two, due to the interaction between objects one and two, is uh, proportional to the mass of the two objects. We already said that in the beginning. And the square of uh, the distance between the two objects. But what about the direction? The direction here, we were looking at object 2. We placed our r hat uh, unit vector to point down. But the force is going in the opposite direction, so in the negative r. 1, 2 hat direction. So we have to add a minus here and then r, 1, 2, r hat. And um, as it is the case with most of these laws, there's a propor proportionality constant. 
And Newton called this capital G. And G, as we know n today from experiment, is 6.67, um, 10 to the minus 11. And then in terms of units, we have Newton. Force goes in Newton. We have um, uh, uh, mass. Uh, this is kilogram squared. And we have uh, meter squared. So that's, um, that are the units. And if you plug those in, then the units of the whole equation will work out. So let's quickly consider the force in object one to see what's happening over there. So we have F21 um, equals minus G M1 M2 over R12 squared. And in terms of the unit vector, we now have R21. Um, hat here going. So again, this minus goes with this unit vector, and that one is pointing here in the opposite direction than our force. Uh, so that's all good. But what we see from this one here, um, and actually from our diagram already, that R12 uh, uh, equals minus R21. And so we uh, see from this then that uh, actually Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, is true for this um, little uh, setup here as well. Um, because the forces are um, of, of opposite direction and of equal magnitude.